All right, well, the Utah State Aggies are in the middle of an amazing basketball season. So this story we're about to be told is a story that probably of the greatest Aggie ever, or maybe even the greatest college basketball player in Utah history. But it's not just a sports story, right? Because sometimes sports stories are really about extraordinary people, right. not just the athletes. And sometimes I pause in my storytelling to substitute poignant events instead of my normal, hopefully ironic light or sometimes even humorous stories, because poignant stories are also a part of our history of the Utah people, and they deserve a place in our collective hearts. 21-year-old Wayne Estes had captured the state. Number 33 was a consensus All-American. Utah State fans couldn't stop talking about him, and there was a lot to talk about such as his scoring 52 points in a game against powerhouse Boston College. And keep in mind, this was before three-point shots and a 35-second possession clock. It was a time when total scores were often less than 50 points. His coach, Liddell Anderson, had seen them all. Years ago, longtime sports reporter Bill Marcroft said Coach Anderson always said Estes was like no other period. Liddell Anderson still said Wayne Estes was the greatest basketball player he ever coached. And Liddell, of course, coached in professionals as well as at Utah State and at BYU. A capacity crowd packed the Utah State Fieldhouse February 8, 1965. They knew this could be the night history was made. They knew the Anaconda, Montana native could score his 2,000th career point as an Aggie. After all, he would only need 47 points that game. For anyone else, it would have been a near impossibility, but he was the greatest Aggie ever. But before the game, he said he felt numb. He missed his first five shots. And then something happened. Suddenly, everything went in. By the end of the first half, he had 24 points. He told a teammate that it seemed that he was throwing up the ball but someone else was putting them in. He had his greatest game ever, and he would score his 48th point. Looks at his defense, pushes, and it's in! It would be his moment. The game stopped. The crowd rose to its feet. Wayne Estes had scored his 2,001st point. This was history, and there were four games left in the season. The team carried him out on their shoulders. Two hours later, he and a friend came across a car accident near USU. It looked bad. A car hit a power pole. They drove by, but had to come back. The sagging power lines were live. One touched the head of Wayne Estes. The greatest Aggie ever, on his greatest night, was killed instantly. He had been the small town hero who had captured the hearts of a country no matter where one lived. Fairbanks, El Paso, Reno, Tampa, Los Angeles, and New York. A country was stunned. The season ended a couple games later, but it really ended February 8th. The team, the crowds, and the hearts of Logan were with the Estes family. They gave the game ball to the family. His brother would have some mighty big shoes to fill back home in Montana. The ceremonial blanket and the all-American honors and all the love of a university went to the family. At the memorial service, the crowds packed in to honor him once more. The team sat together, still stunned, but together for the last time with their leader, number 33, Wayne Estes. The greatest Aggie of them all, maybe the greatest basketball player in the state of Utah history. The one who scored 2,001 points and held the hearts of a university. Number 33, Wayne Estes, is still remembered not only for his basketball abilities, but for what kind of a person he was.
<laughs> and of course, this week is the 59th anniversary of the death of the greatest Aggie of them all.